Well, that's a great day in the kingdom of God. Welcome to Living Supernaturally with yours truly, David Martin. And uh, we're going to pick up on a message I uh, left off on a couple weeks ago. I'm part of a series I'm calling uh, Dealing with Terror, Evil, and Wickedness. And the good news is, my friend, we are victorious. Amen. We overwhelmingly conquer. Woo! <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you know who you are in Jesus Christ, I'll tell you what, this is almost like a moot subject because you know you are victorious. You know you're the head, you're not the, you're not on, you're on top, you're the head. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, bubbling up on the inside of me, that's the goodness of God, the anointing of God, and we're going to have a fun time tonight. I can always tell it's going to be good when I'm having a hard time talking, and uh, it, it seems to be starting that way, so... Hopefully, uh, we'll make it through okay here, but I'll tell you what, I am really excited. I am so excited about the sense of victory that I have, the sense of, of, of a knowing something is in the mix. Now, you know, there's, there's some bad stuff out there, no, no, no doubt about it. You know, the bad people in the world would like very much to uh, cause an event, cause circumstances like what's happening in Iran right now, or or of other uh, events, shootings, and stuff like that. Matter of fact, this whole series started, if you might remember, a little over a month ago with the El Paso shooting and then the uh, Ohio shooting. And uh, God has really put it on my heart to, uh, to help people not fall into a place of uh, fear and worry, but to do what God wants us to do, walk victoriously, letting the peace of God guard our heart and mind. Uh, we started this whole series looking at the uh, the prophetic word that, that tells us that in the last days, perilous, troublesome times are going to happen. And uh, there's going to be a great uh, uh, insurgence of bad coming against the body of Christ. And there's also going to be a grand deception. And uh, my plan isn't to talk about that, but that is... Uh, and I'm quite confident in the making as well right now with uh, the plans of the enemy to uh, try to deceive people. And the Bible says even the most elect could be or maybe will be deceived uh, by the deception that's planned. Never has, there, never has it been more important for you and I to know who we belong to. Amen. As Paul told Timothy, I know whom I have believed and I'm uh, confident he, he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against anything that comes our way. That's my paraphrase. I think that's what Timothy 1.12, as I remember. You know, it's amazing. That was one of those verses. It goes all the way back to uh, 40 years ago. I had gotten, a, a, I think it was a navigator pack of scripture memory cards. And there was like uh, 30 or 40 cards in the stack. And uh, to this day, I, I still know those verses. And uh, they just kind of pop up because I put them in my heart. If you might remember the last uh, message we did in this series, I think it was number four, but I talked about the importance of being a sword fighter. And the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Amen. And we need to learn how to effectively wield the sword of the Spirit. And one of the most effective things you can do to be a good sword fighter is hide the Word of God in your heart. How are you going to do that? By meditating on the Word. And it's just, again, amazing to me. Forty years ago, I had these Scripture memory cards in my pocket. And uh, and, and uh, I would, so I'm driving down the road or waiting in line at the grocery store, whatever the case may be. Whenever I had a free moment, I'd pull that stack of cards out and I would just uh, memorize and those, those, those verses. And again, here we are 40 years later and uh, they're in my heart. And as I said uh, in my last lesson about the math facts, my, my grandson just kind of marvels because he thinks he's only, of course, he's only nine years old. But, but Papa's a genius because as fast as he can throw a, a multiplication, you know, seven times seven, eight times six, four times three, whatever the case may be, you know, I know it instantly. And I mean, that just amazes him. But I'm, I'm trying to help him to learn, you know, the importance of... Um, and learning the math facts and and uh, so often you know in the world today just uses the calculators on our phones and and we don't learn those math facts but it's valuable to this day 
because I meditated on those math facts when I was in primary school, I know them and how valuable it is to be able to to be able to solve math problems because you just know those basic elementary facts. Well, the same thing is true with the word, and I just encourage everybody to uh, make a practice. Matter of fact, if we have time today, I went through my 100 key points and identified about 12 or 15, maybe. I did this like a month ago, uh, and it's part of part of the series I want to get to at some point. But I really encourage you to uh, consider if you don't have my 100 key points to get that, get it in a printed form, get it in the audio form. Uh, and we just released, and it's all brand new. It's not even on the website yet, but we've just uh, started packaging our uh, different products in bundles in uh, on USB drives. And uh, we just released, just last week, uh, a, a, a 100 key bundles that has the 100 keys in a picture frame format where you can actually... Uh, you know, stick the USB drive into a, a picture frame, and it'll play the 100 keys, either uh, just the 100 keys in the picture book format, and or you can add the scriptures to it, you know, either or, uh, or you can put them on your computer and just play it all day long on your computer. It also has the, the uh, two different audio versions on it, and it also has uh, uh, the video that we did. It's on YouTube. Oh, it's like an hour and 10 minutes long of uh, the 100 keys with the, the scriptures and the 100 keys, and I'm reading it. So all of that's on one USB drive for $25. So anyway, that's something new. But if we, if we have time yet today, I want to uh, uh, get, just, uh, again, identify a handful, probably 12 to 15, of the keys that are really appropriate to this area. And today, one of the things we're going to be talking about is the importance, again, of decreeing. And uh, that's part of, again, being effective in our, our ability as a sword fighter to effectively wield the sword of the Spirit. And when you decree something, you're releasing spiritual force into the atmosphere and you're, you're slicing and dicing the enemy many times. But other times, you're, you're bringing things into, into this... Uh, this reality from a spiritual reality and again god created the world everything was created by the spoken word the spoken word is so powerful and i mean listening to the 100 keys is is, is valuable uh but when you begin to say them yourself that's when it, be, it takes it to a whole nother level well, anyway, I want to start here uh, with, again, just a real brief review of some of the things we've talked about. Uh, and as we go through my notes here, and a couple of people have asked about this set of notes. And at this point, there's 12 pages of notes uh, that uh, I've been teach pulling information out of. Anyone that would like the notes, I'll be happy to send you a PDF file of them. Uh, or if you want a printed version, you know, include enough money to cover postage and printing, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, so when you make a donation, if you would uh, just request the notes on dealing with terror, evil, and wickedness, or just dealing with terror, and I'll be happy to send you these 12 pages of notes that I have uh, on this, again, either in a PDF format, which is obviously easier for us, but if you need a print version, include enough money to cover the cost of printing and postage. And whatever you can do over and above that obviously helps the work of the ministry. But we started this whole series uh, with signs of the end times. We saw that from Matthew 24. And uh, one of the key things that we see there from verse 6 is uh, where Jesus says, Don't panic or give in to your fears. Amen. And uh, we talked about that, and we also talked about Paul telling Timothy. I remember, us Timothy was pastor in the church in Ephesus. In First Timothy, things were going very well, mega church. And uh, by Second Timothy, you know things were falling apart. And uh, Tim, <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Timothy, Paul was warning Timothy about the upcoming apostasy. And uh, 
we, we see in 2 Timothy where Paul is telling Timothy, and for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I, I love the Passion Translation. Again, we looked at this where for, for sound mind it says self-control. And uh, that's really what sound mind means. You're, you've renewed your mind by, by the Word of God, and you know, your will is your, your ability to choose. That's your will. That's your soul. You will the emotions in your intellect, your ability to will. Uh, you know, I mean, your ability to choose. That's your will. Your ability to feel, praise God, in good or bad. It's a part of your emotions. And uh, your ability to um, think, your intellect. And uh, so we, we need to renew our mind so we can prosper our soul. That we can have, as, as uh, John said in Third John 2, Be loved with the wish of all things, you may prosper and be in good health even as I so prosper. So we need to exercise self-control. In other words, refusing to let any type of worry, fear, doubt, unbelief have any part of your thinking process. Truth is, God says you're victorious. God says you're an overcomer. You're, you're more than an overcomer. You're a champion. You're the head. You have all authority and power. So whenever these negative thoughts come, we need to bring them into captivity. We looked at that. Uh, in that Greek word, noema, to exercise your mind with thought. And Paul told uh, the Corinthian church, lest Satan get an advantage of you, take away what belongs to you, for we're not ignorant of his devices, his ability to exercise your mind with thought. So, you know, the truth is, as, as he said in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 3 there, where the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, amen, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and then he says, bringing every thought into captivity. Again, spiritual warfare. You know, we have to, at self-control, you know, refuse to let your mind have any, uh, any, any time thinking on anything that's contradictory to the, to, the, to the Word of God. We need to bring it into captivity. And as Paul said in Philippians, uh, think on these things. Amen. Those things that are good and true and pure and lovely and just. Those things that are worthy of praise. Amen. And that's kind of paraphrase there. But those things that are a good report. Think, dwell, meditate on those things. So self-control. No matter what you hear on the news. No matter what kind of a, of a negative report. Even, you know, I heard, I heard uh, uh, I sent two videos actually, a guy uh, a prophet, I don't know the guy, but he put his prophecy uh, on the line uh, saying that California was going to have a 10.0 earthquake before the end of summer, which would be this week. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have a witness to that, but the reality is many, many people are saying that uh, they're, they're sensing uh, this, uh, the big one's about to hit. And But no matter what, happens don't give in to fear don't give in to any kind of a of, of uh, a report that says this bad is happening and that bad is happening know that you always rise to the top and that we always win we're always victorious and again we gotta we gotta re keep stirring ourselves up by way of remembrance that we serve an almighty god Woo! Praise God. Anyway, uh, from the Passion Bible, it says, uh, For God will never give you a spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power. Woo! Dunamis, miracle-working power, love, and self-control. Amen. And we, we looked at the what Jesus said after the Last Supper, where he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. And then John fourteen twenty seven, where it says, I leave you, I'm sorry, I leave the gift of peace with you. Not the kind, the fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. Amen. That's from the Passion Bible again. And uh, uh, and again, from Philippians 4, where it says there, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep, that means literally guard, 
your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word minds is that spiritual warfare term again, noema, the exercising of your mind with thought. But see, when you know God, you know He loves you. You know He, you know He'll never leave you. You know He'll never forsake you. You know His nature. You know His character. You know His ways. So what happens is you you have confidence in Him, and that's what gives you the peace that guards your heart and guards your mind. Again, I'm going, just going through my my notes here, uh, just as around my notes here, but we looked at the apostasy again. Uh, Paul warned Timothy that in the last days uh, that the bad things were going to come. Again, we looked at uh, chapter 4, verse 1, where it says, The Spirit speaketh explicitly, horatos, uh, undeniable terms, that in the latter times. And again, we looked at that times, the Greek word times. Well, there's two different Greek words for times. Kairos, chronological times, and then... Uh, Sorry, chronos chronological. Get that right. Chronos chronological time, and then Kairos, which is an appointed time. And um, what he says here, there's an appointed time that in the latter times. Now, there's the, in the, we have last days, and then we have latter times. So latter is different than the last days because we've been in the last days. But what he says is this bad is going to really happen in the last of the last days, and that's where I believe we are right now. And it's because of deceitful spirits uh, and doctrines of demons. In my opinion, uh, we're talking about witchcraft, sorcery, and the New Age movement. But, you know, as Paul told Timothy, just as uh, when Moses went into Pharaoh's court and he withstood Janese and Jambres uh, with the word, and the staff was a symbol, a symbol of the word. And when he put the staff down, it, it became, a, a, you know, a, a snake, uh, a serpent. But what happened is, Janis and Jambres put their their steps down. They became serpents too. And again, never doubt the reality. There's power in sorcery. But what what happened is Paul Paul Moses staff swallowed up both of them. And that's what we're going to see in these closing pages of history. We're going to see the power of God swallow up deceitful spirits and doctrines of devils. All the new age philosophies and doctrines and all other things, all the witchcraft, all the sorcery, our God reigns, and we're going to watch it. We're going to watch the good overtake darkness, light overtake darkness, good overtake bad. Amen. Again, he says there uh, that that uh, this perilous time was going to going to come. Anyway, that was the warning in First Timothy. And then, when we get to Second Timothy, it actually is is breaking out. And they thought they were in the last days. Obviously, they weren't, but uh, they certainly. Eh, Look like they were, but anyway, Second Timothy uh, is where now the bad's happening, persecution is happening in the church. And then in chapter three of Second Timothy, he says, "Realize this: that in the last days, difficult times, perilous times, um, will come. For men will be lovers of self." Now, this is the this is our society today more than ever before. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irre irreconcilable, arrogant, revilers, dis oops, I did it already, I can't read that line again, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. That is obviously... Uh, the world we're living in right now very clearly. And uh, we touched on this real briefly, but in Second Timothy, Paul does um, admonish him as well that as a soldier, and I just feel like we need to be reminded of this sometimes, that you know your whole life has been planned for you as a mission. We're in the world. We're not of the world. God sent us from a place called heaven and he, the Bible says he knew us before the foundation of the world, but he sent us here on a mission. We know we got to get that through our, our our mind and hearts that or in our hearts that we're here on earth on a mission, and you know there's something specific, and it's just like well we are in the army of God. We're a soldier, and we're not just soldiers. I think, but we're special service soldiers, and. Paul told Timothy, it said in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, it says, 
Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. Now, there, you know, it just says there's two different words for uh, time in Greek, chronos and kairos, appointed time and chronological time. There's two different words for good. And one type of word means good intrinsically, like a watermelon. You know, <laughs> I love watermelon. It's intrinsically good. Uh, that's one type of good. The other type of good is good by demonstration. And this is the word that that God's speaking to us here, that as a soldier, we need to demonstrate goodness as a soldier of Jesus Christ. And it says that no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. When I read this, I always think of... Uh, Romans, where it says in Romans uh, 12, I beseech you, brethren, that word beseech is a military word. It's a, it's a soldiering type of word. It's a, it's a word a commander, an officer would use when he is recruiting. And uh, when he's recruiting, he, I mean, if you're, if you're in the Roman, uh, you know, if, you're, you're, if you're a centurion, your way of recruiting is you go into a city and say, you, 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 you. <laughs> you're in the army come follow me now if he points at you you don't look back and say ah no never mind I'm, I'm not interested no you probably won't live long at that point because you have just been recruited into the Roman army and that that word beseech is that recruiting word it's a parakaleo and it's a command it's a uh uh some versions would say, uh, I beg you or I urge you. Uh, King James says, I beseech you again. But, but the idea is, it's not a suggestion. I am commanding you as a commander-in-chief. Paul speaking on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. I beseech you. I'm, it's actually, uh, in the Greek it says, a call to action. And again, we're being called as good soldiers to fight the battle to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And and this, as he said in Timothy there, to not get entangled. Well, in Romans it says, it says it this way, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And King James says a reasonable service, but Greek says logikos, which means your, your spiritual service of worship. But then the next verse says, and be not conformed. Now that is an emphatic imperative, meaning again, this is not a suggestion. Emphatically, I command you, do not be conformed to this world. And, you know, as we look at the church today, you know, it's going to be sad as we're coming, or it is sad, coming into these closing pages of history, how much of the church is so lukewarm. And, you know, Jesus said that in the, in, you know, in the end, many are going to say, well, I did this and I did that in your name. But what's he going to say? I never knew you. And, you know, people go to church, but they don't have a relationship with God. They don't have a, this uh, personal communion with the Lord Jesus. And this, I think, has always been important. I know it's always been important. But more than ever, I'm telling you, in these last days, we need to have that relationship, that fear of the Lord, that reverence of God, and that desire to want to be in His presence. I, I want to come and, 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 and sit at your feet, and I want you to teach me your way, and I want you to, to help me in, in knowing what to do and showing me how to walk in the supernatural. Amen. And I commend you, because I actually, I'm, honestly, I'm preaching to the choir. Because you have to be this way or you wouldn't be watching this video right now. So praise God as it so often is. You know, you know, I get to preach to the remnant. I get to preach to the best of the best. And so, you know, this message, as much as I'm hoping it stirs and encourages you to a higher ground, I'm, I'm hoping that you will integrate it into your message that you can bring others in your neighborhood, in your family, in your workplace uh, to a higher level. Because we need that in this day and hour more than ever before. But but as I look at the church, I mean, honestly, it's hard to tell uh, uh, most Christians from the world because they they watch the same garbage on television, they they see the same garbage at the movies, 
They, they frequent the same garbage on the internet. They, they use the same garbage, the same kind of bad language. And, you know, it, it just shouldn't be that way. We, we should look different. We should, we should be a, a shining example of the salt of the earth. As, as a, this is, this, we're Christians. We look different. We talk different. And I'm confident of this. I'm really, really confident of this. And again, I'm preaching to the cop, to, to the remnant here, but I'm 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 confident that what's happening, and we're going to talk about about a verse about this in a minute, as we talk about the armor of light. But what we're coming into right now, I believe, is the body of Christ is waking up, like it says in Ephesians 5:14, where it says, "Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead." And I will give you light, or another version would say, I will cause you to shine. Well, that's the armor of light. And I believe we're going to see this light shine brighter and brighter as we go forward in this day and hour. And the way it's going to shine brighter is the more we die to ourself. Because the more we, we shed our, our, our selfishness, the more uh, we walk in the light of God. I use this example all the time. You, you, you probably have seen me do this before. I think I did it one night on my Tuesday night show here. I, did, I drew a picture. But if you take a light bulb and you were to cover it up with a shade, uh, say a globe, a, a dark, uh, op opaque, black ma go globe, and so it was totally covered, there would be no light. Now John said, I must decrease so he can increase. Now, the truth is, I don't think he can increase. I think we have all we're ever going to have of Christ in us. When he came in, we didn't get just a little bit. We got the whole enchilada. So but what happens is, is, if we were to take a pencil or some kind of an object and puncture holes into the shade, what would happen is the more we punctured it, the more holy it would get pun intended, but the more we put filled it with holes, what would happen, besides being more holy, more light is going to come out. The more, the more we can remove the shade, the more we can remove the darkness, the more we can remove ourself, the brighter that light is. Now that light is going to attract the ungodly to the light. It's just a, it's a natural phenomenon, just like bugs and the natural are attracted to light. Well, the unsaved, they might not tell you this, but they are attracted. There's, they're attracted to it because it's a natural spiritual phenomena that God put in people because people want to know truth. They may tell you different, but they want to see truth. They want to see the reality, and, and they're attracted to it. So the more light you can shine, the more they're going to be attracted to, you, to the light in you. But the other factor is, because of the frequency as it would be the convicting power of that light they're going to they're going to uh, feel the conviction of their sin they're going to feel their need uh, for jesus you know this is what we saw in the great awakening people like john finney he would just drive uh, his coach uh, into a town or walk into a town and the entire town would feel the convicting power of a most high God. And this is, what, <clears throat> this is what I believe is happening with the remnant today. We're going to be walking in this kind of light, this kind of glory, this kind of power that's going to bring great conviction to the unsaved. And it, it's going to be glorious. But anyway, what, so t Paul told Timothy to you know, not be conformed, but we what? But to be transformed. Now that word transformed is the same the Greek word for for transfiguration. Jesus on the mountain was transfigured and his raiment became as white as light. Well, again, that word uh, for transfiguration is metamorpho, and that's where we get the English word metamorphosis, and that's the same word we see in Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to the world, but what? Be transfigured. See, that's what's going to happen is the more we, we are that living sacrifice, the more we refuse conformity with the world, the more we allow the Christ in us, the light in us to shine brightly, 
it's going to bring about a supernatural change that's going to go above and beyond whatever you can do in the natural. Praise God for willpower. Praise God for, you know, human uh, desire and that really can climb up, cause you to climb a mountain. But how much more can you do by the Holy Spirit? How much more can you do in the supernatural? And what's going to happen is this transfigurating power, this quickening power of the Holy Spirit is going to allow you to walk at a level you've never seen before with signs, wonders, and miracles. And anyway, one point I wanted to bring up here is Paul said, don't get entangled. No, it says again, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That's in 2 Timothy 2, again, verse 3. Uh, but that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Well, this, uh, you know, we talked about this some weeks ago, but the soldier, uh, Roman soldier, was issued a blanket as part of the, his, his wardrobe, if you will, the Roman outfit. But the blanket uh, was a neat blanket because it was like fleece on one side and water repellent on the other side, and, and it would provide like a rain coat when needed or warmth when needed or a pillow. Out. But when they went to battle, Roman war code says you have to leave the blanket at home because when, if they tried to bring the blanket, the blessings, the, all the wonderful things God's blessed us with as soldiers, but if you try to bring the blessings to the battlefield, what's going to happen is your sword is going to get entangled in the blanket. Your sword is going to be hindered by, by the blessings. And uh, in trying to protect the blessings or tr whatever, trying to keep the blessings or trying to you know, do both as you will, you're entangled. And what's going to happen is the person next to you that's depending upon you as a good soldier might lose his life. Or you may lose your life because he or she was entangled and the thing that was meant to be a blessing became a curse. Just more than ever, we need to be serious, amen, about our walk in the Spirit. Okay, I want to keep moving here. Uh, so we talked about the spiritual warfare and uh, we also looked at that, that reality in First Timothy chapter 4 uh, where it says some will fall away from the faith. And that's aphistia. And uh, that means a very slow, very gradual departing away from the sound teaching of the Word of God. And, and again, this is exactly what's happening in the church today. You know, you don't hear many messages like this. We're confronting sin and, and speaking of the things of holiness and, and self-denial and taking up your cross because it's not the kind of a message uh, that people want to hear. So because of that, you know, it's not preached. So what happens is we, we have a, a church that is buying into, you know, a, uh, a grace message and license to sin. And then bottom line, we have a very lukewarm church. And uh, people are walking in a place they never should be. Anyway, I want to keep going here. Uh, and going, we talked about uh, this word, noema. We got all these different verses we looked at here. And uh, how the, the devil worked through Peter. Remember that? He spoke to Peter's ear. And then Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Now, the armor of God in spiritual warfare, we looked at that. And uh, we, we looked at, again, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith. And, uh, and I want to come back to that shield of faith a little bit. But we come to Romans 13. In verse number 12, where it says, The night is almost gone, the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. And uh, this word armor is the same Greek word uh, that's used for weapon. So it's, it's, it's the armor of light, but it's also a weapon. And uh, something I heard Neville Johnson say uh, a couple of years ago at uh, the Lancaster Conference, talking about this armor of light. He didn't call it that, but that's what it was. And by the way, if you did not hear, uh, Neville Johnson went on to be with the Lord here a couple of weeks ago. He's now walking on the streets of gold. Um, 
I had gotten an email forwarded to me from Sadhu Sadar. They were very best of friends, and he evidently was fighting some disease for many months. And uh, anyway, I think it was two weeks ago, he graduated on the weekend. But Neville Johnson talked about, and it just so spoke to me, how that uh, in these last days there was going to be a supernatural shield of protection around believers, around families, uh, around spiritual communities, and it was like a, an invisible shield. And when he talked about it, I just thought about this armor of light. But with this armor of light, this supernatural shield, people that were bad people could not cross that shield. They, 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 were, they were stopped. Uh, but believers could come and go right in and out of it without a problem. It reminded me of a time, uh, it goes back many years ago into the 90s, but I was ministering in Judy Ellingston Church in the Minneapolis St. Paul area and had a prayer line and I came to one particular guy, and this guy was a big man, a construction a contractor, probably 270, 280 pounds, all muscle, big man. And when I stood in front of him, I knew by the spirit that there was a demonic entity uh, there, and I just instinctively dealt with it. And he didn't take too kindly to that, and... Uh, he, he decides to, to deck me, and he pulls his fist back, and with I mean, a lot of strength, I'm certain, his fist was coming right at me. I mean, I never had a chance to, to blink, much less think. But it really didn't matter, because he got with just, I mean, inches of my face, probably. I don't know exactly all I saw was the fist coming. and But some type of an invisible shield, probably an angel, I don't know, but he hit something that caused him to get thrown backwards at least 10, maybe 12, 14 feet. I mean, just literally catapulted him, flying backwards. And four ushers literally, I mean, were on the scene quickly, holding him down because uh, he, again, was demon-possessed. <clears throat> we cast the demon out of the guy, and he became a very meaningful part in the church there. But what happened? There was a supernatural protection. And this is what I see that we're going to walk in in these last days. And again, I think of it as an armor of light. Now, everything that we do in our walk in the Spirit needs to be how? By faith. When we look at all the miracles that Jesus did, you know, so often people think that Jesus healed everybody. But really, he didn't heal everybody. He healed uh, primarily, and I think it probably, I say primarily, uh, we we have a couple occurrences where entire multitudes get healed, but like in the one multitude in Luke six seventeen, it says they came to hear him, and they came to be healed, which implies they came with faith. But when you look at all the miracles, as an example, like in Matthew eight and nine, in these two chapters, you see uh, almost one third of all the miracles that Jesus did. But all the miracles that Jesus did there, what you see repeatedly is a couple people, usually one or two people, out of a large group of people, a multitude, one or two people get healed. As an example, in that mix is the woman with the issue of blood. It says there was a multitude of people there thronging Jesus, pressing in. That's what the word throng means. You can hardly breathe because you're pressed in on every side. But this throng of people was pressing in uh, on Jesus but how many people got healed in the whole multitude? One, the woman with the issue of blood. And when we see it over and over again, and what we see is this little phrase, again, if you read Matthew 8 and 9, you see it repeatedly. Jesus says, do you believe I can do this? Like, like blind Bartimaeus in the tree. And do you, uh, Again, a whole multitude of people who got healed, one. But what does Jesus say? Do you believe this? I can do this. Yes. Well, according to your faith. It's almost always according to your faith. The, the centurion servant, you know, according to your faith. So <clears throat> I, I think this is so important that you begin, uh, and I continue as well, to believe for the supernatural protection. 
that we have a supernatural shroud that protects us, protects our family, uh, protects us wherever we go. And even, you know, something like faith, I mean, I mean like translating. You know, it says in Hebrews 11, verse 5, I think it is, that Enoch pleased God. And, and Enoch was translated by faith. When you read the book of Enoch, it, it implies, I've not read it, but I've heard this taught, that, that Enoch had many different raptures, as it would be. But see, he had this relationship. He pleased God. And he got translated by faith. So again, we need to know God's nature. We need to know his character. We need to know that by faith, you know, <clears throat> God rewards those. You know, all people are enjoy God's goodness to some extent. But Hebrews 11, 6 says, He's a rewarder to those that diligently seek Him. <clears throat> I just got back from uh, two weeks of traveling in Pennsylvania. I think my voice is a little bit uh, weak. And then we finished up last weekend in Milwaukee, great meetings. God did so many wonderful things. So again, the point here is, I believe that uh, the more we can die to ourself, the more this light is going to come out of us, the more we're going to have this transfiguration experience, and the more we have the transfiguration experience, the greater this field of invisible uh, glory, power, shield will be there to protect you, protect your family. I like the way the Passion Bible uh gives this verse in Romans thirteen twelve, Passion Bible says, Neither darkness sorry, night's darkness is dissolving away as a new day of destiny dawns. Woo that's where we are, a new day of destiny. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Whew. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, uh, decreeing God's word here, I was, I was hoping I may finish today, but I see we're not going to, because a few things I want to touch on yet. And uh, I would like to... Uh, leave a few minutes here before we get done here to do uh, uh, these key points from 100 key points and uh, uh, so I, I need to leave enough minutes for this but one of the key things I want to talk, talk to you about is in Job 22 verse 28 it says you will also decree a thing and it will be established to you and light will shine on your ways. Praise God. Talking about the light again. So, you know, we need to decree God's word. We need to decree that no weapon formed against us can prosper. We need to decree that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, in, in Psalm 119, talking about light again, 119, 105, the New American Bible, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now Isaiah 55, 11 says, So will my word be which goeth forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the manner for which it was sent. Again, uh, decreeing God's word. Whenever you decree the truth of God's word, what's going to happen? Angels are going to perform it. You know, it says very clearly, it will not go out void. So whenever you're decreeing God's word, again, wielding the sword of the spirit or the shield of faith, what's going to happen? Things are going to happen that you can't see that you're creating this light shield or you're creating, you know, a light field to slice and dice the enemy or accomplish some supernatural objective, you know, in healing or something of that type. 
But Psalm 103, 20, 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Again, God says his word always, you know, it always accomplishes that for which it's sent. It never, ever, never, never, that means never, goes out void. That means anytime you're going to speak the word, something is going to happen in the supernatural realm. And uh, we can see one of the things that's going to happen is the angels are going to get involved and they are going to perform the word. And again, that's one reason why, and we, I, I mentioned this a number of times already, that you make it a habit to start reading Psalm 91 every day. And it's, it's often referred to as a soldier psalm. But as you read Psalm 91, and in my notes I have Psalm 91, by the way, in uh, the Passion Bible, which is really awesome. Uh, but in reading it in the Passion Bible, I'm not going to do it because there's not enough time here today, but it's so powerful, you know, that we're, we're, we're abiding into the shadow of the Most High and no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Well, that's, well, that's not actually in that verse, but that's the essence of it. You know, a thousand may fall at this side, ten thousand at that side. It will not come nigh because he's given the angels charge over you. Amen. All right. Well, before I get to the end here, I'm running out of time because I got more things I want to talk to you about here. And one of them that we'll come back to probably finish up next week is pleading the blood of Jesus. And I think uh, blood literally has been proven scientifically is uh, congealed light. And so when you're pleading the blood of Jesus, you're literally uh, pleading the light of God. And again, I think this is a part of the armor of light and the importance of building uh, this light shield, the armor of light. But I, I, I pulled out now here again uh, a selection from my collection of 100 key points. And if you again, if you don't have this, really, really encourage you to get it. And again, uh, you can order the audio CD or uh, and the booklet. I think it's $12 uh, for the set. And again, it's not available on the website, but we do have just released, again, just last week we came out with it, two weeks ago now, the USB version. And uh, $25, and uh, you will get uh, all 100 keys in the beautiful, when well, you're going to see it right here on, on the show to you. Uh, you'll get all 100 like in the format except I'm not going to put the scriptures on the screen here uh, but every one of the 100 key points usually have two or three uh, scriptures that, that are referenced in it uh, so when you put this USB into your computer or in a picture frame you can either do it with just pictures or you can do it pictures and scriptures or just scriptures if you want as well uh, it makes a great Christmas gift but I, I, I play it all the time just in my office when, I, when my computer is just sitting idle. I'll put, I'll put the 100 keys on uh, just that that's constantly before me, the Word of God. Uh, so, but I picked out 16. So I'm going to read this to you. Uh, read these 16 to you that are relevant to this topic. And then as I'm reading each one, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put it on the screen. All right, so here we go. Number well, number one is actually number twenty nine. I purpose to relax and be stress free. Now I'll give you the numbers that they're actually in the in the uh, hundred keys here. So I mean this is number two, but again number thirty one. Number thirty one. I resist the devil and give him no place in my life in thoughts, words. Or deeds. Number 36. Angels are camped around me, my family, and our possessions, and they go with us, protecting us from all harm everywhere we go. Number 40. I am seated in heavenly places where I rule and reign in life. Number 41. 
I am free from all fear, doubt, and unbelief as I have power, love, and a sound mind. Number 42. I have all authority and power in the name of Jesus. The devil is under my feet. Number 50. I am unmoved by what I see, hear, or feel. Number 51. When I hear a negative report, it goes in one ear and out the other. 52. I think on these things, whatever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and worthy of praise. 58. I always see past the problems of life. I see the answers. 83. Greater is he that is in, within me than he that is in the world. 87. No weapon formed against me can prosper. 88. In the midst of any adversity or challenge, I count it all joy. Number 89. I have entered into the labor of rest, and the Holy Spirit is teaching me all things. Number 95. God causes all things to work together for good for me as I love God and am called according to his purpose. And number 98, I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Amen. Woo! Praise God. I'll tell you what, I get stirred up every time I do those. And uh, if, if you do get the audio version, uh, it takes 14 minutes, or even the printed version, it'll take you 14 minutes to go through all 100. And just, uh, you know, I've, tell, I've told people for years, and this, this came out in 2007, uh, God gave me this after studying the, the supernatural for uh, 27, 30 years at, point, at that point. But he... he as I tell people, I've told people, read these 100 key points every day for 30 days. Now, I really suggest people do this. I call it power meditating. Get the audio copy and read it with me as you as you look at the print copy. But as much as you can, pray in tongues at the same time. I'll tell you what, even if, and you probably can't read it and speak in tongues. But if you're listening... And speaking in tongues, you'll be amazed uh, the presence of God. But just listening to it, you know, it has just a powerful impact on many, many, probably most everybody actually. I have so many people tell me it's in their car all the time, coming and going wherever they're going. It's just, they've always got the 100 key points going. I had one lady some years ago say, David, what's on there in the background? I said, well, there's a instrumental track done by Daniel Cleefield real powerful music track and she says no 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 what what what's going on it's some kind of black masking or back masking whatever and i said no she says well it's so powerful there's got to be something else to it i said no it's the word the word is that powerful amen well i want to go back on something here just for a minute and closing up here and again we're going to come back and we're going to finish up this series yet because so i want to talk to you about uh, casting your cares upon the Lord and leaving whatever you're dealing with, whatever kind of negative report, whatever's going on, we need to give it to God and leave it with Him. Amen. So we want to talk about that. We want to talk yet about communion. And uh, in the last couple of minutes, I want to just wrap up. Oh, and pleading the blood of Jesus. That's the other thing. So that's going to finish this series. But uh, as I was talking about the angels perform God's word. Something I want to encourage you on, and we, we looked at this before, and that's praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit. Now the Bible says when you pray in tongues, you don't understand. You, you have no idea. It's a mystery. It's, it's the language of angels, if you will. It's the language of, of, of heaven. Now, the Bible says in Romans 8, 
that when we're praying in the Spirit, it's the Spirit, capital S. It's capital S. God is praying. Well, he, it says, knows God's plan. He, God in you knows the destiny. One of the things that Kevin said I had shared with me uh, as I spent some time with him a couple months ago and he was talking about his time in heaven with me. And one of the things he said to me is, you know, you know this, we're going to talk about this, but in Psalm 139, it talks about the book that's been written about your life, my life. There's a whole book written, the plan of God for your life. And, and one of the primary things that angels are assigned to you and I for is that that book is complete according to God's plan, that the right doors open, the right things happen. Well, the angels, that's, that's one of their main assignments, is to help you fulfill your destiny. Well, see, the Bible says that we don't know sometimes what that all is, but God in us does. I mean, he knows the book. So when you're praying in tongues, it says he who knows the mind of the Spirit, that knows the destiny for your life. He is praying. So what happens is the word that you're speaking, because it's God speaking, when you're praying in tongues, it's just is equal because God is saying it. You don't understand it, but it's God's word. But that is as powerful as the word of God itself. It's the same author. So what happens is when you're praying in tongues, you're giving legal right to the angels. They, God is giving literally the angels the assignment. And we, we just have to recognize how powerful and important it is this virtue, this gift <clears throat> that God's given to us of praying in the Spirit. Paul said, Paul had this revelation, and Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. Now, it's not all of you individually, but rather in the Greek it means all of you collectively. Now, all of you put together, he said, I pray more than all of you combined. Why? He had the revelation. And let me, in closing, use every moment wisely. As Ephesians says, redeem the time because the days are evil. Refuse to let time go by without making a spiritual impact. Amen. So, pray in the Spirit. Meditate on the Word of God. Decree the Word of God. And let God do mighty things in you and through you for his glory. Amen. Well, it's amazing how fast time goes when you're having fun. Amen. And again, I want to thank you for the privilege you're giving me here to speak into your life. And I want to say a special thank you over the last couple of weeks. A couple more people uh, than normal have, have decided to support the ministry. And I want to say a special thank you if the ministry is blessing you, if the ministry is encouraging you, would you please pray about your part? And God's given us this vision to see over 100 million souls saved, discipled, and serving God. And you can have a part of that. And just think of it this way. Every dollar you, you give is one of the souls saved. Now we have a plan. We're working the plan in this prayer app that God's given to us. If you want to know more about that, you can go to the to the ministry website and check out Excellence Prayer App. And uh, we're still believing for more finances. And the kind of on a hold state right now is we're in kind of a in between and waiting for more finances to come in. But we have the plan. We actually do. We have an actual plan. And uh, it's well underway to see this fulfilled. But I'm telling you, we need help. We need more partners. We need more people that are being blessed by this ministry to come alongside and say, I want to help. I want to be part of this vision. And uh, as you're blessing me, <clears throat> I want to bless the ministry to bless others. So pray about that. Whatever you can do, I say thank you in advance. You can make out, uh, and you can call the office anytime, 800-543-PRAY. And if there's nobody there, leave your number. We'll call back. But you can go online 
and you can make a donation online, any major credit card or PayPal, or you can use the snail mail. That still works. P.O. Box 144, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, uh, 74014. All that information is on the screen there for you. And again, uh, if you like these notes, <clears throat> at this point there's about 12 pages of them. I'll be happy to send them to you in a PDF form. And when you make a contribution, just say, please send me notes and make sure we get your email address and uh, we'll send them out to you. And uh, again, thank you. And again, if you're interested in the the new USB drive, it's $25 and uh, there's no postage. Uh, so, and you can only do that uh, by calling the office or if you, if you want to make a $25 uh, purchase as a donation purchase uh, right on their USB and uh, it will it will be actually a purchase, not a donation, um, because you're buying something, but that's the only way you can do it online. Uh, but make sure you request USB, and $25 will, will buy the USB, and uh, anything above that will be a donation. And again, thank you. If this has, again, blessed you, like the video. It helps our, our standings, and uh, even better yet, share it. And if you get to subscribe, It'll give you announcements when new videos come out. I'm losing my voice here. So I'm going to say goodbye. God bless. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.